First, for the overview, what is an Arduino? It's basically a small microcontroller PC, and I put a ruler there next to it, and it's, it's about 65 millimeters. It's not too large. And some specifics on it, it uses an AT Mega 328 microcontroller. It has 14 digital input and output pins. Six of their pins are analog reads. It has a 16 megahertz ceramic resonator. And it only has 32 kilobytes of flash memory. <coughs> the average computer usually has four gigabytes of memory, or um, 4,096 kilobytes and its dimensions are 68.5 millimeters by 53.3 millimeters. So what is RFID? Well, on the left you can see that it's an easy pass. Easy pass uses RFID for identification through uh, automatic tooling processes. In the middle you have basically a flat RFID tag, which is usually used for shipping. And then on the right, which I found it pretty interesting, it's an RFID tag about the size of a grain of rice. It's used for tracking purposes. So RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. It's mainly used in tags and tracking, and there are three types, active, semi-passive, and passive. Active is where it actively seeks for a receiver to send data to. Um, passive is where it will only wake up when it's receiving your bar. And each RFID tag has a varying working distance. So I made a little GIF image showing how RFID works with easy passes. So normally an easy pass is inactive, not working. But when you drive near a toll booth, it'll, the toll booth has an electromagnetic field which will activate the easy pass and it'll send out data paying the toll for you. So my whole project was to create an RFID reader writer using the Arduino components. So I began my research. I discovered that RFID runs on different frequencies. The first one is 125 kilohertz or low frequency. And there's 13.56 megahertz for high frequency, 915 megahertz for ultra high, and 2.45 gigahertz for super high. Now, most tags use 13.56, which has a range of about maybe a foot, foot and a half. And then 915 megahertz is usually in easy passes, usually has a range of about three to five meters. So then I did research on a specific RFID tag called the MyFair. It contains 16 sectors. Each sector has four blocks, and each block has 16 bytes, and each byte is 8 bits. So the total amount of memory it has is 1 kilobyte, or 1,024 characters of data. So after I finished that research, I looked at Arduino shields, and I found the Adafruit PN532 RFID slash NFC shield, which is a component for Arduino. It's made specifically for reading and writing RFID tags. So my considerations were the functions that I had to perform, reading, writing, and then saving with memory. I had to create a design, so I decided to use buttons for activating each feature and a status light to tell me the current status of the components. And I also had to come up with this, a design to compress the components into the smallest size possible. And the casing is just a box. I couldn't really think of anything else. But. So my budget is listed here. The first item, which is Arduino Uno, I didn't actually personally purchase it. It was already readily available in the room, but it ranges from 10 to $25. And then there's the Adafruit RFID shield, which is $40.
and I ordered three RFID tags to test with for 885, so it came up to approximately $60. And these were items that weren't priced because of their, um, well, you, it's not really, you can't buy them separately. So they're just buttons, LED, battery, and a 3D printer case. So I went ahead with planning. I had planned features for reading the RFID data into memory, writing from the memory into the RFID tag, and then another feature for swapping the two data values from the tag to the Arduino. I also wanted to do an import and export using a uh, serial receiver and transmitter built into the Arduino. However, I realized that you can't export into files, so I ended up just doing a um, export into the text. So here's a case I designed in SketchUp. I had the basic layout of the Arduino with the shield and that case I imported. This is a top view. I labeled the buttons and the status light. So this is my circuitry that I had. It's a little cut off at the bottom, but I had three buttons down there. I think I spent more time working on the Arduino picture than the actual circuitry. So it's basically just getting power from the Arduino using five volts, powering an LED, and then sending current to three batteries, and having it read the status from each pin. And this is where I pretty much got bored. So I decided to uh, start modeling the Arduino as detailed as possible in SketchUp. Yeah. And here's some more views of it. So I started my physical work. I used the previous images I showed to create my circuitry. I wired up my buttons and status LED. My plan was to glue in the wires into the underside of the top of the case and to make the wires elongated so it would be easy for um, inserting and detaching it from the Arduino. And this is my case design. I used SketchUp 2014. It's in a one-to-one -one scale with the Arduino. I used a millimeter ruler to physically measure all the dimensions. And because I didn't have the R5D shield, I actually had to find a picture of it online. And as you see at the bottom, there's the shield with the quarter next to it. I had to do ratios and proportions to find the actual dimensions of it because I didn't physically have it on me. And so I started programming. I chose Notepad++ over the Arduino IDE because the Arduino IDE isn't very good. I'll be talking about that more later. But anyway, I also had an RFID library. And basically, my whole logic was it'll wait consistently until you press a button, and then it'll activate one of its features. And I had to program an LED to blink in a certain pattern because the Arduino doesn't have any screen to give you return data. So this is just a basic layout of my code. It's just the setup of it. It just set, sets up the status LED, verifies the board connection, checks the version, and sets up the button. And then here is the actual reading. It'll check if the button's pressed, and if it is, it just calls the function that I wrote. And if it fails, it'll blink the LED multiple times to indicate failure. Otherwise, it'll just blink it once to indicate success. And some problems I ran into. Where the uh, part shipping time? Most 
frequently asked question was, where are my parts? <laughs> I only received one RFID tag, and even though I ordered three. My shield still hasn't come in yet, so I'm still waiting on that. And yeah, I had two tags missing. I only ordered, I only got one out of the order three. And I had so many problems with the Arduino that I decided to make an entire section dedicated to it. And so I present to you the problems, the Arduino section. So first we'll start with the external library that Adafruit developers wrote. It was made specifically designed to work with their board. It was 1,400 lines of code and 47 kilobytes. Very messy, disorganized. I didn't like using it. It wasn't too well documented, so I decided to change that. This is an example of part of the code for authentication. So I reorganized their library. I brought it down to 900 lines of code and 32 kilobytes. It took me about two hours to do it, but I still hated the structure of the whole code. So I ended up rewriting the entire library. <laughs> brought it down to 300 lines of code, only seven kilobytes. It took me about an hour and a half. And I also changed the language from C++ to C. So about the Arduino IDE, it's written in Java, and I don't really like Java too much. It's kind of clunky, it doesn't work all the time, and it's slow. It uses Java to verify its code that you program into it, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. The thing I really hate is that it uses a two-space tab. Most programs use four spaces when you hit the tab button. This one uses two so everything's more condensed. It had a clunky interface and a lot of compiling code issues. Sometimes when you compiled code, none of it ran on the Arduino for no reason at all. So something I had to deal with. And this is an example of the interface, which I did not like at all. And so, the biggest problem I ran into was that the buttons were a little wonky, and I kept getting highs and lows readings when I should be getting consistent readings. And apparently, I learned that the Arduino can somehow detect current without any current being passed to it. So I ended up replacing every single component, including the Arduino. I even rewrote code, and in the end, I figured out the buttons weren't wonky. Everything else was broken. <laughs> <laughs> so I have nothing to physically show you. I apologize for that, but my board, my um, shield board never came in, so I couldn't get the exact dimensions for the case, so I couldn't make that either. So I have my finished code. It's just that it can't run off of anything. Here are some things that I learned from this project. Building is only a small task of it. It has to do with a lot of planning and design. It requires a lot of time and effort. And sometimes two weeks isn't enough, even for a very small, simple project. And in theory, it doesn't really mean it'll work. <laughs> and everything is definitely harder than it seems. Any questions? Do you plan on finishing this when the parts do you find? Um, I'm not too sure. I kind of gave up on it, so. You rewrote that library. Do you plan on sharing that? I mean, it is an open source environment. Or do you think you can do anything? Because that was a huge rewrite. Um, I don't know. I kind of wrote it for my own personal use. So I wrote it in my own style. I'm not sure if anyone else enjoys writing like that. So I don't know. Yeah, you said the library was originally 47k. But the Arduino is 32k. So how is anyone supposed to be able to work it? Oh, most of it was um, a lot of unused variables and definitions. So a lot of it 
was unnecessary memory wasted. But had you not rewritten it, it wouldn't have been able to flow. Well, no, it still would have. Because when you compile the code, it doesn't compile everything from the actual code. It'll only take variables and instructions. So it actually comes out to be less than what your code you wrote is.